Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be going through the Bitcoin chart here. I have deleted everything off the chart and I'm going to be building up a few steps of technical analysis to present a bullish and a bearish case. As always, I recommend you turn off all distractions around you and give me your full focus for the next 10-15 minutes. As always, you will thank me by the end of the video as I am here to share some great trading knowledge. So let's begin. We obviously have a blank chart here. Let's say we are first going to be looking at some resistances. I think you have some really nice resistance levels uh, coming up. Um, specifically, the first resistance that was formed on the 27th of July. Why was this such a nice level that we can still be aware of? Because you can see here, resistance, 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 then flipping into support, 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 back into resistance, okay, back into support, before that break, obviously, for when we had the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder, before losing that level, back testing it as resistance, big drop down to around $10,000 support. Okay, big psychological number. So it's very, very, very clear, isn't it, that we had this level has played such a role in the market ever since the 28th of July being a very pivotal support resistance level. And once again, uh, it's likely, okay, if we push up for, past the last time, that we can come to challenge this once more. And now this is where we look for confluence. I think this is lovely. Taking a trend line from the overall high, 12,500, expanding it down through the last time. What you can see is if we do break through this last time, what we have is a confluence then of this coming up to the horizontal support resistance as well as the trend line. And here you have some confluence for a pullback one would, one would expect. Okay, uh, so the, I, I've, I've recognized this is a very important level, basically. As well as this, I can show you some Fibonacci masterclass, what we have from that high down to the low. You can see that we have, well, the biggest level for me there is, is 11,450, 11,000, uh, you know, around 11,000, between 11,450. And obviously you can see the top fib there coming in 11,613. This starts, though, to be aware, 11,208. So this is offering you a, a value area for a short. Uh, 11,208 to 11,615. So you've got a uh, trend line, you've got Fibonacci, and you've also got horizontals. I guess you can see that uh, that's a big area of resistance coming in around 11,500 region. Okay, big region that you got there. And that's obviously coming back into prior consolidation areas. Um, I am currently in a long position, by the way. Uh, but I, I'm now going to, well, locally, I suppose for, for local levels, you, you, you know, you've got bears playing off the last high, really simply playing off this last high, because what can they do here? They can be shorting this region with, uh, you know, looking for their invalidation above the high. And I think that's an acceptable play. That, that is absolutely acceptable. You know, I can understand why people are shorting here. It's just I'm not taking that trade at the moment, you know. Uh, obviously, in the market, I, I, this is what I don't really understand, that people, when they present a, a technical analysis, there's people always saying, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong. You know, at the end of the day, there's always winners and losers. You have to pick, decide which you feel is the most probable and, and trade off of that. If you get invalidated, you know, move on to the next next trade, you know. There is there is never 100% in trading, but you can get really good probabilities. And I feel that's what I'm playing off at the moment. So, um that for me is a very big resistance level okay that region of resistance and i've shown you a few factors there of why you can agree with me or you know <laughs> on the flip side through support what we can do is take let's put on the magnet tool from the low down here i swear this magnet tool has a has a <laughs> has a mind of its own sometimes it's very hard to line up the lows there you go from the low back up to the high and as you can see really, really nicely that you had that drop down yesterday onto your first FIB level there. Again, you got the reaction off of this. Okay, coming back up to challenge that high once more. So you can see, oops, important support there coming in around uh, $10,750. And your, you know, your value is there coming in around $10,200. But yeah, if we start to come down towards here, my my plan for, for longs is, is invalidated. Just so you're aware of that, like... Yeah, and yeah, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't still be in my long position if we're down around here. But OK, in the short term, what I like to see here is the momentum that is clearly building up right now. OK, we are currently above the daily open. Uh, so that's coming in at around 11,914. And you can see that yesterday we had some really nice bullish CBD divergences and arguably they've already traded out. Uh, this was the post that I put in my group this morning uh, that I was looking for that push towards 11K. Obviously, we had the bullish CVD above VWAP, above the HTN. So, you know, that was my reasonings for thinking that we were going to push to the upside. 
was that a good idea? Absolutely, it was a good idea because I have hit that first take profit, uh, obviously being 11k itself. So from this region now, uh, well, actually, I'd like to talk you through a few a, 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 a step here of what I like to do when it comes to counter trading, the general patterns that you'll see. Uh, as you'll know, this first head and shoulders pattern that was formed, left shoulder, head, and the right shoulder. Uh, this was forecast before it happened. As you know, I identified this here. And from there, we had the rise and the drop down for the head and shoulders. But uh, if you may or may not know, if you're in the group, I was originally going to be looking to actually long the first breakdown here because I like to counter trade these obvious patterns. In the end, obviously, you had no swing failure pattern and you did fall all the way down. But my original idea was going to actually be looking for an aggressive long. Um, you know, upon taking the liquidity of a head and shoulders pattern. And what I'd like to do is refer you to the next pattern. And, uh, you know, you can get into my head a little bit of why I counter trade these patterns. And this is a post uh, that I was writing uh, on the, uh, two days ago. Uh, all I see is people trying again and again and again and again to short the highs. You know, people are not interested in buying the dips, but the trend remains up. Market makers printing rising wedge to top it all off. And then in a post later in the day saying, would love to wreck all retail short in the rising wedge. So what does this mean? It means you print such obvious patterns and people just absolutely love them. <laughs> so what I love to do is counter trade them. Like I was interested, to be honest, I was absolutely interested in buying the uh, head and shoulders, even though it's a bearish pattern. I never did in the end because you never got you never got even a swing failure and that was one that you needed one. As you all know that this this major move down was correlating with the ES uh, on the uh, same day uh, that was obviously happening on the third of September. When you look at the ES, uh, you know that was happening on the third of September. So you know that was obviously the heads up. But moving on, uh, what you had uh, what I referred to on this post is obviously the printing of the rising wedge, and so that was when you were looking at. So it doesn't look so perfect now. We've had a lot of data through it, but you obviously, a lot of people were aware of this. Okay, it was something along these lines. Can't remember where exactly where it was now, <laughs> but it was something like this. I'm pretty sure there, there was a lot of talk about rising wedges in the time of this is the rising wedge. And what you've done is you, well, you just went straight through it like butter, really. <laughs> you know, you got that move straight above it, or you got like a little fake out of it, and then you continued up to around $11,100. So, uh, in the end, you you did essentially wreck everybody <laughs> trying to short the rising wedge because it didn't play out. So um, what I like to do is like look for these really obvious patterns that people love to trade and actually look for the counter trades of them. So if it's a bearish pattern, I'll look for, for a long. If it's a bullish pattern, then I'll look for a short. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's something I love to do. But um, yeah, I guess to, to, end, uh, to, to wrap this off, what I'd say is, what, I'm, what am I looking at here? Well, Originally, I, I, you know, you, you still got the momentum in, in terms of market structure anyway to the upside. You know, we're still making here higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, hey, higher... This I'm not sure why Siri all the time suddenly starts to think I'm speaking to her. <laughs> um, you know, we're still making high highs and higher lows. And, and until we change this market structure, then one could say this is still higher highs and higher lows. You know, it's still making its way up here. So there's no reason yet to not expect higher prices. Uh, what could change this is if we actually do this into a lower high, lower low. And as you know, that would actually also be breaking for this very important FIB support. Okay, so if we do change that market structure, and that would now be putting in a lower high at 11k, down for the lower low, breaking that FIB. And yeah, absolutely, you can be looking for these lower, lower, lower value areas. But I think at the moment, uh, the way I'm trading this anyway, is in a long, hit my take profit one. And I, I think this is the key. This is the key to trading, um, taking profits. You know, I am a trader that will take my first take profit fairly quickly. The reasonings for me doing this is because I, I would prefer to take away continuously small profits and uh, obviously that sacrifices a big move because I, you know, I, let's say, by the time I've uploaded, I don't expect this, by the way, but let's say by the time I've uploaded this, we're sat at 11,500. Well, obviously, by me taking profits very early, take profit one early, you know, I could have made more money. But this is the thing. I would always prefer to be in the position of taking in an initial quick profit and at least protecting myself if I'm wrong on the analysis, uh, rather than being in a position of not taking the first profit and, you know, like we're doing now, getting a pullback. And, uh, you know, I took my first profit um 11 11,000 and now we're sat 11,000 10,985 so you know <clears throat> I, I think it just highlights what you know i hope hopefully you can start to understand but you know i'm a trader that does take its first take profit quick 
but um <laughs> that's just my style of trading i suppose it's not for everybody but um you know i love to do that uh, but anyway uh you know that's the way that i'm maintaining in this position so i'm in a I'm in a long right now i'd like to see market structure hold and and bullish you know continuation of this trend uh obviously the takeaway sign of this is you know a sign of weakness could be if we actually then start to actually reverse this market structure you lose that first fib level you know it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be as bullish as i as i would have imagined and you know i'm also absolutely fine to accept that i'm wrong on an analysis you know i will you know always admit you know i've, I've not got a 100 percent win rate there are trades that i lose you know so do i lose this one absolutely that is a possibility but i think one of the things i take away as well from this video is that i will have a bullish and a bearish plan so i'm in a bullish plan at the moment because i'm in a long but should this trade getting validated i'm not going to be sat there in the moment thinking what's next i already know what i'm going to be doing should that plan get invalidated so i think it's very important firstly i know when i'm entering where my first targets are i know where i'm going to be trading that to i know where my stop loss is and i know should my plan get invalidated i'm not then going to be sat in the moment thinking what's next i'm going to be right right move on to a bearish plan okay my bullish plan is invalidated and the invalidation generally means that you know well i was wrong on that trade so i'm not going to be continuously looking for that trade anymore am i um so yeah i hope i've given you a bit of clarity uh identify some oops sorry I'm, I'm pretty sure when i touch that it makes a loud noise um i've identified a very important resistance obviously locally yeah absolutely you do that have that eleven thousand one hundred top and, and this is what bears are going to be shorting off now so if you you're a bear absolutely you got your invalidation and you're, you're going to be searching for these lower prices so I, I i understand why people are shorting um i guess it depends on the time frame you're trading but uh nevertheless Hopefully, I've identified here for you some very important resistances and very important supports. Generally, just being the low off of that fib. Okay, being the low off of that fib. Okay, as you can see, coming in around 10,750. Um, and from here, we're building up a case of market structure. We're looking at momentum. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just building cases to enter trades, <laughs> you know, and we're not taking random trades. We're taking the highest probability trades based off a of technical analysis, you know. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, talk you through why I like to counter trade some trends, my ideas. Um, oh yeah, also you can see the stock market is uh, ultimately uh, still in its range. Okay, so you're still in the sideways range of the stock market. Obviously gold slightly printing up, but overall still in a sideways range. So obviously we can recognize uh, overall these ranges, <clears throat> you know, while general markets are still holding their ranges, Bitcoin slightly to hold its range. So you know, that's another bearish factor, to be fair. Um, but, you know, trade your own ideas, not financial advice. I will end by saying, um, <clears throat> yeah, obviously, I've done a live stream last night about this template, um, which has be had been very, very well received. And you can see why <laughs> the levels working like magic. Absolutely, they are. Um, so I would say if, if you would like the knowledge, OK, because this is an educational stream, if you would like the knowledge around how to use this template as well as also the template itself um you know you can come across two chart champions and uh, that, that all, all that educational material is available for you we have uh, hundreds of videos uh you know from the fibs to the you know understanding market structure to understanding risk management you know to volume to trend lines to what else have we got going on in there? There's so much I can't even think of my hat. What else do we have going on in there? We have trend lines, volume, CVD. We have, you know, general patterns. Oh, my. I, I, there's so much I can't even remember, to be honest. <laughs> I guess I'll just load it up right now. Um, <laughs> but basically, yeah, we have a lot going on in here. And I will just show you. I, I, I'm, I need to check it because I actually have forgotten myself everything we have going on in here now. Support resistances, patterns, moving averages, indicators, entering trades, channels, Fibonacci, volume and footprints. Okay, <laughs> obviously we're the beginning of the series. But so yeah, anyway, if you'd like to see that educational content, come across to Chart Champions. If not, I hope you've enjoyed this video where I've taught you through some bullish and bearish factors, how I'm approaching this trade, why my take profit was 11k. Well, I hadn't shown you actually why my take profit was 11k, but basically my original take profit was based off of 11k as you can see here that point of control coming in eleven thousand and seventeen dollars uh, at a high in the end was put in eleven thousand and forty two dollars so you know i'm not gonna 
cry about that because now we say 10,983. But you know, that there's the giving targets and very, very well respected, if I, I would say so. Uh, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, I would appreciate a like down below if you've enjoyed. If you haven't enjoyed, just give me a dislike and um, we can all move on. I uh, hope you've had a brilliant, brilliant time in this video. Thank you and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, everybody. Bye.